All right, guys, I'm with Raul Castillo and Samantha Wynn from Army of the Dead, Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead, uh, debuting on May 21st on Netflix. It's also going to be out in theaters. And I, I will say, I wish I would have gotten that theater experience because this movie is amazing. There's so much that's packed into it. And for anybody that's a Zack Snyder fan, they're going to love it. Anybody that's a zombie fan, that's going to love it. But it's a hell of a visual story. But I want to start with you, Raul, mainly because your character, uh, your character kind of plays Guzman, he kind of plays this social media influencer a little bit. Talk to me about how your character Guzman ends up with Scott Ward and his team. Um, or I, I wind up in Scott Ward's team rather, right? Yes, that's what I meant to say. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, Scott Ward, AKA Dave Bautista is tasked with putting together a team to go into Las Vegas and recover this large sum of money um, so they're looking for, you know, experts in different fields. There's a safe cracker, there's a pilot. And um, I think in Guzman and crew, they find some expert marksmen. Uh, my character, more than an influencer, I like to think about him as a gamer. Maybe even ah. before he started killing zombies, he made a name for himself online as a gamer. And he was an ex excellent, you know, marksman online. And then he's also the only uh, member of our team. And I believe maybe Chambers as well, that was, was part of... Uh, who's part of the, uh, who's from Las Vegas. Right. Uh, so when all hell breaks loose and zombie apocalypse goes on, like uh, I start, I translate, I think my gaming skills to killing zombies and I make a name for myself online on the, on the Reddit, you know, and then on the YouTube channels and all that stuff. And Twitch. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So then they, uh, uh, Ana de la Reguera's character, um, Maria Cruz, who has sort of a, her finger on the pulse of the things in the community um, discovers Guzman, and Guzman brings along Chambers, uh, you know, and, and that's where that's where we that's where we come in. Now, I want to talk to you, Samantha, about Chambers a little bit because she's one of the only ones that are part of this team that actually hasn't killed a zombie prior to the outbreak. So I want to talk about that, but she also is a straight up badass that you would not assume. But we'll get into that in a second too. But talk to me a little bit about Chambers and why she wants to join up with the team. Well, I think for Chambers, her number one uh, reason and priority always is to look out for her buddy, Guzman. So if he's going in there and it's gonna be dangerous and for lack of better words, shit is gonna get real, she wants to make sure that she's there to, I guess, have them have the best chances as possible. I think uh, coming from Las Vegas and I, we talked a little bit about like their background, I feel like Guzman is more like family to her. And I don't know that Chambers has anyone else that she would consider that close. So it's kind of not even a question in her mind that if he's going, she's going to. Uh, I don't even think she cares as much about the money part so much as uh, being there for her friend. So I think that's it. And then in regards to the other part where I raise my hand as a no zombie killing, um, it, luckily, it's not in the script. The world is kind of our, our oyster and how we get to craft it. But my thinking is, yes, we've done a lot of gaming together, probably like VR, uh, shooting kind of games where that's familiar. But also, who's not to say that she hasn't killed non-zombies before? Oh, you know what? <laughs> the one thing I'm kind of learning about uh, Zack Snyder's approach is it's very collaborative. And Samantha, you're a longtime collaborator with Zack. You've been you know, with, with, with Justice League and everything else. But I wanted to ask you a little bit about that because you brought up the backstories. And I want to talk about the collaboration process a little bit with Zach. And Raul, you even talked a little bit about uh, your character's backstory being a gamer and all. How much were you guys given, um, you know, the free reigns to kind of create your own backstories within the world of Army of the Dead? We'll start with you, Samantha. Uh, I felt like it was an extremely creative, collaborative process. I feel like Zach was very much the kind of director and it was a new experience for me because I had not gotten to work with him in this kind of capacity sure. before. Mm. But I, I really felt like he was so open to everyone's ideas and ways that they were crafting their characters to suit you know, ourselves and our casting. Um, I didn't look anything like the character art that was originally drawn for Chambers. So it was, it was really nice to be able to have that room to, to make it fit for someone like myself. So I, I had an absolute blast and I felt like he was on board with most, if not all of the actors' ideas for their characters. And then Raul, is this more of like a blank canvas that you and Zach are kind of creating this character together of, of uh, Guzman? 
Um, yeah, it did feel like it, even though for me, this was like one of the biggest, if not the biggest production I've ever been on. And, and I was for sure a little bit intimidated going into it. I didn't know what to expect. And for instance, I, I, I wanted to make a bold choice and do something interesting because he is this brash character and he's very much a peacock, very different than I am in my, in my day-to-day life. And I came to the table with this idea of maybe like going blonde. And to his credit, Zach was really uh, interested in what I had to say about the character and very collaborative. And uh, together with Marie Larkin, the head of our hair department, we kind of came up with this look and, and it's just a testament to him, how collaborative he is. I, I remember even the day that we were shooting the team going into Las Vegas, not to give too much away, but Zach came to Sam and I and was like, I have this idea, I wanna do this shot. Like, you know, it's a huge movie and I'm sure a lot of these shots were already programmed but on the morning of, he comes to us and he's like, I have this idea. I think you guys should be taking a selfie as you're coming into, <laughs> into Las Vegas. And that was wonderful because it really played into our, our storyline to our characters. So I think that says a lot about Zach and how, you know, how well he, how, how genius he is at planning, but also how genius he is at recognizing what's in front of him in the moment. And that's exciting to see on this scale. Yeah, one thing I absolutely love about this movie too is that all the characters on the surface level can be very very much like caricatures if if you let them be but each character actually has layers to them the deeper deeper the deeper and deeper you dive and i kind of wanted to talk about uh, zach's script a little bit because i mean look it's it's easy to say this is just a zombie movie but it's more than just a zombie movie it really does a really good job of, of really blending genres so what were some of the immediate things that jumped out at you when you first uh, read uh, army of the dead and we'll start with you raul I mean, the first thing that jumped out at me was the humor because I, I know Dawn of the Dead is so dark and I love that movie. I mean, it, it just sort of came out at the right time and it did the right thing. And it, I was already like a zombie fan from when I was a kid and, and that kind of reinvigorated my, my passion for, for, the, for the genre. But then when I read this script, the humor really jumped out at me. It was, and now that I saw it all come together in the color palette and the cinematography and the production design all like, it, it, sometimes you just have to trust. You read something and you know you're working with an auteur and you don't exactly know, but if you, if you, put, if you trust, and with Zach, I mean, Sam can attest to this, I think that they, you know, they, I mean, he just, he creates a space that, that it's just easy to trust and, and you just give yourself into it. And I think that's where the best kind of work comes from. Absolutely. Samantha, how about yourself? Uh, what were some of the, the big things that jumped out when you first read the script for uh, Army of the Dead? Uh, for me, it was the heist thriller part of it that I was I was most excited about. I got into play in the kind of fantastical, um, you know, especially on Sucker Punch, there were like zombie German soldiers, there were robots, things like that. <laughs> but an actual like story heist with characters and, on, and an ensemble cast that I, I was able to be a part of, that was the most exciting for me. I was so interested to see what each actor was going to bring to each of the personalities that was on the page and how we would all come together to, to make this ragtag group of people and, and to have us complement each other and kind of work that out as we went along. That was the, the most exciting part, reading it mm. through for myself. It's, it was the newest part for me as well, so. I yeah. love that. Now, uh, <laughs> you know, there is a, there's a great montage that gives us some backstory to some of, some of the characters, but to really set the tone in the world, the first badass real moment we have is with your character, Samantha, uh, because there's, oh man, I, I almost wish there was a camera on me when I was watching, me and my girlfriend watching that movie together. <laughs> and uh, your character has, has, has a, we'll, we'll say, it, I don't want to give anything away, but your character definitely has a little rivalry with uh, Martin, played by, uh, by Garrett Dillahunt. Um, first of all, before we get into how badass your character is, can you talk about the relationship between Chambers and Martin? Uh I, I'd like to think that I can be like Chambers in this way, <laughs> but um, she's extremely observant. And I think, I think her being a little bit quiet and hanging back speaks to her, her um, I don't wanna say mistrust in people, but her uh, extra caution. Right. And so I think that ends up being extremely, extremely valuable when interacting with Martin's character. Uh, and I think she's one of the first to kind of catch on to that. So she very much has a sheepdog kind of place in the team in the beginning, because I think she, she wants to make sure A, that her best friend is okay. 
<laughs> and then B, <laughs> that, um, you know, things go as planned. And if, if she's walking in the back of the group, then uh, she's better able to keep an eye on everything. Yeah, there's definitely that sequence where uh, you guys are kind of going where, I mean, I'm not gonna give anything away, where you guys are going through and the zombies are almost hibernating. And mm -hmm. I I was absolutely tense for your character. And then how that, that whole scene kind of played out, I was just like, oh my gosh, what can happen next? It's so much fun. But I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, the action because well, let's, let's not forget, this is also an action movie and the action is very intense. How much training went into uh, some of the action, the action set pieces that, that we find in Army of the Dead? Because yeah, your character really sets its tone with it, Samantha. Thank you. Uh, well, it, you could say that we spent about a week learning the choreography and then um, a day shooting the leading up into the action sequence and then a day shooting the actual action sequence. But the reality is that I've worked with Damon Caro since Sucker Punch all right. the way back in 2009. And Matt Rigetti, Wayne Daglish, a lot of these same team from back on Sucker Punch is still working with Zach today. So I'm sure it was an accumulation of the last 10 years of working together. Uh, and Damon very much taught me fight choreography and taught me the style that I have today. So I, I think it was just a well-oiled machine by then. And it was almost like, I felt like I was an extension of Damon's uh, fight choreography brain. And so we all, we all ended up working together very well. So I think we did a lot with the amount of time that we were given, but due to a lot of training ahead of time. <laughs> now, Raul, <laughs> something that I found super interesting that you said earlier is that the choice for the blonde hair was really yours. What else did you want to bring to the character of Guzman that, that uh, may not have been on the page? I mean, for me, it was always about, I mean, I remember day one in the makeup chair, it's like locating Samantha in the makeup trailer and going like, you and I need to connect. Mm -hmm. Who are we? And how do, you know, how do we create like a family? Because that's what we are. We're like a little family unit. And like, mm -hmm. and you know, um, that, that was not on the page and that was really important to me. And then also it was just as important because Sam has the kind of relationship that she does to Zach's work. Um, I got and to the this team like you were just saying some Sam mm -hmm. like that to me it was sort of like an in uh, you know I have a theater background I come from like indie indie film in this kind of world mm -hmm. so Sam was sort of my like my my peek into this world and it was it, I, you know I just have a newfound respect for it because it's such a it's so you know it's so complicated and so complex and stunts and and all this it, there's you know people's livelihood and their their well being is on the line and and, and that was, I, I think that was, I mean, I, I could have anticipated it, but no, nothing could have prepared me for it, I think. But it, but it, from the, from the get-go, it was important to me for us to understand who we were before we meet, uh, they, you know, Scott and Maria, mm -hmm. like, and who we are as a unit. And then that, to me, like, set the tone for the, for the rest of the shoot. And now, just, on, on the ahead, flip side of that, um, I was so appreciative that Raul did that because, uh, he felt like he was peeking into our world of action and Zach's team. But I, I was so hesitant because this was my first experience in this kind of role in such a big film that I was so grateful he did reach out because I didn't, it, it's all new to me, the dynamics between actors and like coming up with backstories together and having that kind of communication. So I was just kind of sitting there hoping we could talk, but too scared to initiate anything myself. So I felt like <laughs> he was my peek into the actor's experience on a production mm. in that whole world. So I, I was really grateful for that. I love it. It sounds like the first day of school. It's, it's so cool. Um, <laughs> it totally is, yeah. every time. <laughs> now, I do have to ask, because this is uh, something a little bit different for Zach, because he's also in, the, in, in with you behind the camera himself. Can you guys talk to me just about his directing style on this film? And especially Samantha, since you, you've worked with him in the past. So what the difference is uh, with working with him on this film compared to the past. And also just if you guys learned anything just about directing by osmosis, just by being around his creativity, because he's, a, he's, a, he's an amazing visual storyteller, amazing visual storyteller. So Samantha, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I could say that the, the biggest difference was that uh, during the shooting process, I don't think I heard him say once, oh, we can't do that, or oh, no, we're not allowed to do that, whether it was for like blood reasons, because blood has to be missed when it's PG-13, or uh, just 
uh, guidelines by studios. It really did feel like he was in his full creative space and he was actually exercising all of the ideas that were coming to his mind, which I thought was amazing. And I, I think it's been released in some of the articles, some of the jokes that didn't make the cut that maybe did go too far, but, <laughs> <laughs> but he was able to actually do it and shoot it. And that was a, a new experience. But um, I think it felt almost like it was on Sucker Punch where he was up close and personal with everyone. It was his story. And I think over the next few projects, just because the DC universe is so, sure. so massive and there are so many creatives involved with those characters, they're already established. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, he kind of physically got farther and farther away from the camera. And then this was the first project where he was literally operating and he's, just feet from us while we're filming. And I think it you could see it bring him a lot of joy as well as uh, an extra level of collaboration with us. He was right there feeling it with us. How about you, Raul? Can you talk to me about your experience working with Zach? Dave told me that at this point now that he feels like with the right script and the right actors, he can direct a movie with pretty much everything he can <laughs> Zach. How do you feel about the collaboration process or just seeing Zach kind of really in his element? Yeah, I mean, you know, now I'm starting to understand that this was a small film for Zach. But when I was walking onto set, it felt like such a huge movie for me. Um, but I'm starting, I am starting to appreciate how, how, you know, his proximity to us, how, how I mean, he would, you know, he'd yell cut from behind the, you know, the, the camera and that, and he was, I felt like he was watching us. And sometimes it feels like the director can feel, it, it can feel so removed at times. Um, but it felt like he was right in there with us. It felt like he was getting down and dirty. Um, and he was, you know, laying in the ground, like just like he, there was nothing that he was asking us to do that he wouldn't do himself. Sure. And that's like, once, it, once you see a director do that, you, you, uh, you'll do anything for them. You, you know, that, then your trust is all there. Now in most films, it, you guys are usually marked out where you're gonna go, you're gonna be here, then you're gonna walk over here. With Zach, I heard on this film, it's more like he's really following what you guys are doing with the camera. Is that is that different for you guys as actors? Uh, we'll go with uh, Raul. Uh, um, as, as far as like him being like so close, I mean, uh, uh, I, I mean, I think that in my experience, it was be because there's so many you know moving pieces, sure. and you got to be careful. And I was very mind, you know, it was, uh, it was always really excited. I felt like a little kid a lot of times doing these action sequences because it took me back to being a kid and imagining. But because, it, you know, it, they are dangerous. I felt like you got to, you know, you got to hit your marks and you got to do this and that. But, but he was so playful. There's just a playful energy to Zach. I think, I don't know how it's been in other movies, Sam, but like, I definitely felt like he was in his element and he was having fun every day while we were on set. And, and it, made, it made my job uh, so fun. Yeah, it, it totally felt like that. I, I guess for me, being a little newer to this kind of role, it, it's hard for me to gauge what normal is versus how Zach was on this project. I don't know um, how, how other directors or other projects may be about, you know, setting specific marks for each and every scene right. and every single action that you do. But I, I definitely felt a, a layer of being creative. And if you did something different in a scene, he would follow it. He would just kind of, there would be parts where he'd let you just live in the world and he would just film it. And whatever you did is what you did. There was no preset action or he didn't, he tried not to block mm, sure. uh, like mm -hmm. your character moments, things like that. So I, I really appreciate it, especially in the, the intro scene for, for Raul's character outside oh. of that gas station or the outside of the liquor <laughs> store. It kind of felt like everyone was just doing their thing and he was yeah. like watching. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. It felt like, where, wait, where are the cameras? It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, something that a few of your other cast members have told me about, which I find really fascinating, is that you guys shot this in essentially an abandoned hotel or casino in Atlantic City. Um, and a few of your cast members had said some weird things were happening uh, in this casino or abandoned casino that you were staying in. Do you guys have any fun memories? Like, Mateus told me he left for a, a, a while and, like, there are a bunch of beer bottles in his room. He has no idea how they got there. Um, Anna was telling me that there was some weird stuff that happened uh, like in the hotel too. Do you guys have any weird stories about the hotel at all that you guys shot in? <laughs> um, I, I have one, the, the bar at the showboat. Um, I, I was meeting the fight coordinator at the bar 
and we were just gonna go out with a couple people. And the bartender was like, oh, there's a fight tonight. You know, you should be in there. And I was wearing like a tank top and I was like, you know, in shape at the time. So I was so flattered. I was like, oh, that's really nice of him. And then he went, you know, one of those show card girls. And then he started <laughs> dancing around and I was like, oh. <laughs> My friend even said like, she's a, you know, an Olympic level martial artist. And he's like, nah, show cards. Wow. Like, oh, this is a, this is like a time capsule to hear that nowadays is so so jarring but you know some people I think just don't know better he was obviously very well intentioned so <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you have any uh stories about the place uh, you guys stayed in or shot at no that hotel was it was there was a weird energy in that hotel for sure but mm -hmm. I, I didn't I didn't experience anything too weird thankfully it was like it was like there was a reason that the, the I think we shot in there because it was being demolished or it was on its way out. Mm -hmm. So it definitely felt like it was on its kind of way out. Like it had seen its better day, like, you know, like this, this, uh, this hotel, but, um, they're like, but it put us right. Driving. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> now, Samantha, earlier you had mentioned, and, and it's totally true. You, th this team, uh, in front of the camera is a ragtag group of characters put together essentially to go on a, a zombie heist, um, behind the camera. Uh, you guys are also a ragtag group of actors put together to make this movie. Can you talk to me about um, the other actors you worked with? Because everyone complimented each other so well in this film. Can you just talk to me about the dynamic of, of your guys' cast? I, I think in a weird way, the thing that unified us was that we were all so different from different cultural backgrounds, different countries, different upbringings. It really um, banded us together in that no one really had many shared experiences. So we were all learning it and accepting it and uh, having this new shared experience through new lenses all together. It was, it was not that anyone was left out or anyone was a misfit because we were all misfits. So <laughs> that really now, lended itself to, it, to the right. story. <laughs> now Raul, zombie movies have been around you know, for, for a long time, uh, but Zach is such a visual storyteller and he really understands the process of stories. Uh, can you talk to me about what this adds new to the zombie genre? Well, there's the alphas, right? The um, alphas, which we'll talk about. Yeah, absolutely. It was like a supreme kind of zombie. So, I mean, I, I, you know, at the end of the day, I think Zach, I mean, I thought, you know, before theater, before film, any of this stuff, I love zombies and horror movie makeup and Rick Baker. And like, that was like, I love that world. and that, that was so fascinating to me. But I think Zach really he just knows, he knows what's, he, he understands the zeitgeist, yeah. I think, in, in a way that few people do. And uh, it's hard, like, I would work for him again in a minute because he's such a, he's such an incredible leader. And you, and you feel that, like, with his crew. I, I feel like everyone, and Sam can attest to this, but, like, everyone on that crew, uh, you know, in front of, and behind the camera, there was this kind of, everyone was so dedicated and so happy to come to work every day. There was a sort of, of joy uh, in in the spirit of the work. Um, as far as what's new, I think I think just the kind of um, he just has fun with it. It's amazing to the the the, the level of. I mean, I remember sitting around with Dave uh, Bautista at one point when we were shooting the sequence where they were gonna you know explode like uh, they were gonna do this like uh, effects thing with like a uh, a big ton of blood and guts and like you know. And we were giggling like like little kids, and I and I was I I kind of didn't know what to make of it, but I knew that Zach was onto something. You know, I knew right. that he he understands. I feel like he understands the fans, and he understands his his audience. And, and uh, he's sort of a master. He's not sort of a, he is a master craftsman, and this and it this shows itself in this film because it's entirely original, and it's unlike anything I think that's out there that's ever been out there. I agree from, from the opening, you know, the opening scene all the way to the end, it felt like something new. And it actually is very layered, very funny with tons of action and, and, and a little bit of horror involved in it too, being zombies. But Samantha, speaking of that horror element a little bit, we do get introduced to these new alpha zombies. Without giving too much away, uh, can you briefly explain what the alphas are? As, as uh, hinted in the trailer, they are, faster, they're smarter, and they're organized. And I think you can see in, in the trailer, there was one 
a shot that seems to be talked about quite a bit. And that's when Dave is slashing at this zombie and he's literally like, whoo, whoo, mm. and he's dodging. So I think that can give a, a nice little tease to people as to what exactly those zombies are capable of. But I think uh, instead of just adding the speed element, they really are a, a whole other uh, team. They're a, a threat as a team rather than individual um, mindless zombies. So uh, yeah, mm. I guess without spoiling, people can expect a, a much more difficult challenge when it comes to the, the slaying part. Now, uh, this, la this is the last question I have and it's for the both of you. Uh, we know that the Army of the Dead is uh, going to be expanding with prequels and sequels and, and we're getting a real franchise here. Can you talk to me about what you hope to explore if your characters somehow find their way back into this world? Because we know there are prequels and sequels coming. So uh, Raul, we're, we'll start with you. Where, where would you like to see your character go in this extended universe? I would love to see a prequel about the family that Sam was just talking about, about how that family comes together. Once, you know, zombie apocalypse starts in Las Vegas, how do we come together? How do we survive it? How do we get out? Um, uh, it, it's really interesting to me. Uh, and, and how do we become uh, 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 such a, you know, uh, 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 social media sensation? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how about yourself, Sam? Is that, is that the same lines that you kind of want to explore that as well? Oh, 100%. I think just like you get to see in the opening sequence that has already been released, um, you got to see Dave and Anna and their group and how they assembled in Las Vegas and got out. But what about all of the other groups of people that got out while the wall was being built? So there's a whole story for other characters, even in just that opening sequence. And I feel like that is one I'd love to explore with our characters and our team. And then, like he said, the transition out of Las Vegas into becoming influencers. Woo! <laughs> you know, I lied. That wasn't the last question. The last question is this, and I'm not even sure you're able to answer this, but have there been any talks about reprising your roles in the Army of the Dead, Army of the Dead franchise at all yet? Sam? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, say, we'll say it best, maybe. Maybe. I don't want to get in trouble. No. <laughs> well, look, you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. The movie is so much fun. I can't wait to explore more. I can't wait to watch it again on the 21st. But thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate right it. On. Thank, thank you, you for Joseph. having us.